Hi, welcome to updated uh, listing clip with Timothy Co, CEO of Entheon. Welcome to the show, even though it's not your first time here. It's a pleasure to be here again. Uh, for our audience, if you've been following the CSE, uh, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook, you'll know that we have a segment called Newly Listed Clips. Well, Entheon was on, I'm going to say, roughly a year ago, and we thought it's about time to catch up with Timothy and see what's been happening, what's new, and we're, we're here. So, Timothy, please just tell our audience, uh, for those who don't know you, what it is Entheon does and your role with the company. Yeah, pleased to be here again, Barrington. Um, so Entheon is uh, in the drug development space. We're trying to develop uh, DMT-based drugs for the purposes of treating addiction. So that's our core focus. Uh, we have a drug development program and clinical trials planned for late Q4 of this year using the very powerful um, psychoactive uh, molecule known as DMT or dimethyltryptamine. Um, and the premise behind that is that for those that suffer from addiction, there is generally uh, sort of an internal subject matter material that they're not able to really access. The DMT, through the purpose of its mechanism of action, is able to uh, elicit and bring to the surface, thereby allowing an individual that is maybe, you know, not dealing with their issues, their emotions, their memories, their traumas, to actually have an experience around that, to shape uh, entirely new perspectives around these things that, for whatever reason, they may not have been able to address. Um, recently, in the last couple of years, there have been a uh, growing wealth of evidence that things like psychedelics and psilocybin, for instance, are very effective in eliciting these things. And that's been very useful in the realm of treatment-resistant treatment depression, major depressive disorders. And we believe that uh, based on literature that we've looked at, there is also a very strong case to be made for DMT in treating uh, addiction-based uh, issues. And so that's our core focus. I'm sure we'll have some time to get into some of our other focuses, but at present, yeah, DMT drug development for the purpose of treating addiction. Wow, and uh, that, that's fascinating. You've been a public company now for 365 days. Uh, where do you see yourself in the in the larger scheme of things uh, within the within the sector within the industry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, since we listed, there have been a, there's been a huge Cambrian explosion of interest in the psychedelic space, and so <clears throat> like us, there have been a multitude of other companies entering the drug development space developing their own novel molecules or forms of administering those molecules for a variety of mental health conditions. Um, and I do believe that a lot of these companies do have a very firm foundation upon which to stand. Um, but that being said, there is some, some amount of siloing in terms of which molecule for which specific indication of which, you know, we also have DMT, which we believe is the most safe and flexible molecule uh, for the purpose of treating addiction. We also see DMT in a variety of other mental health spaces, as well as a variety of other molecules in a variety of uh, mental health uh, spaces. And so what we're seeing is a bit of a sort of siloing uh, sort of effort taking place where there are dozens of companies proposing these drugs for a variety of mental health conditions. Um, and a lot of them will likely see approvals as we also hope ours will. That being said, Entheon has taken a look at the landscape and um, you know surmised that Though all these amazing development efforts are taking place, there isn't enough put uh, effort put forward in terms of personalization safety. And so that's an area that Entheon is very much committed to. Um, and so if anyone's been keeping track of our news releases that have been going out in our corporate developments, we're taking a very committed approach to personalization in the genetic space, as well as within electroneurophysiology. And these are sort of big words and big concepts, but the premise is, that we believe that as the science evolves and as we evolve our understanding of the literature as well as clinical research, we can use genetics to further enhance our understanding of individual patient variability. Um, understanding that, you know, you and I, we may respond differently to a variety of drugs, as well as we, you know, we may possess different risk factors for specific, um, you know, negative adverse events. And so we're taking the position of evolving with our uh, evolving genetics as the science evolves to better characterize who is appropriate to take a variety of psychedelic medicines. Um, so we acquired a company called Halogen Life Sciences, 
as well as recently acquired a company called Lobo Genetics uh, to further that aim to uh, advance our understanding of genetics, not only to service our own DMT development efforts, but to service um, the already existing psychedelic uh, therapy space, as well as the broader psychedelic space as it comes online over the course of the next five or 10 years. Um, so the genetics testing, um, as we develop it further, is intended to you know, provide patients as well as physicians a better understanding of what the risk factors and appropriate uh, drugs are, whether that's ketamine or psilocybin or MDMA. Uh, we're trying to develop a additional safety protocol or safety layer so that you know, ultimately that individual that's taking that very brave step of saying, I want to get better, I'm you know, maybe acknowledging for the first time that I'm tired of feeling the way that I feel. Entheon is really committed to capitalizing on that moment of willingness and ensuring that they don't waste their time uh, getting ineffective treatments or drugs that aren't appropriate for them, or at the worst, uh, drugs that might elicit negative adverse events for them. And so um, we're committed to personalization in that regard. Um, and so, yeah, we're trying to be collaborative and service the broader psychedelic industry, uh, not just our own internal siloed aims. Now, uh, what about the genetics test kit? Does that fall in to what you're doing? And, and can you elaborate just a little bit on that? Absolutely. Yeah, the genetics test kit is um, currently available within Canada and the US. We only recently launched in the US. Um, and since its launch and sort of public visibility, we have seen a very dramatic increase in terms of interest. Uh, we're working on a variety of uh, commercial partnerships as well as research-based partnerships. Those are advancing um, where there are, and yeah, there's a growing interest in terms of knowing how genetics might affect someone that's going in to receive a ketamine uh, treatment. Um, right now, our genetic test kit is focused on five biomarkers and we're looking to expand that. And we're in the process of um, recruiting additional advisory firepower to inform that process. Um, but presently, what the genetic test kit looks at is a variety of biomarkers that are associated with increased risk of psychiatric disorders, understanding that there are certain psychedelics in certain people that can elicit a psychosis or a schizophrenia response. Um, and then additionally, there are metabolic uh, factors that will indicate whether an individual is more or less likely to have a strong metabolic response or a weak metabolic response, ultimately potentially contributing to whether a person has a stronger or weaker than intended uh, drug treatment that might result in uh, you know, unexpected therapeutic outcomes. And so, um, yeah, that's what the, the kit presently looks for within the ketamine, uh, ketamine bucket, as well as within the broader serotonergic bucket. And of course, you know, science evolves on a continuous basis. We recently seen MindMed uh, identify a biomarker that is specific to LSD metabolism. Um, and so we're constantly looking to include more information and refinement into this test and iterate it and evolve it as um, the science gets produced and as we produce the science. It seems like something new is coming out every single day um, to further enhance our knowledge and understanding with this. And to that end, uh, clinical trials. <laughs> these are... These are expensive. How is your cash position? We're currently sitting on approximately uh, $3.5 million. Um, so that's, you know, it's adequate for us to carry out our current uh, endeavors and development plans. That being said, we do understand, obviously, that the full clinical development pathway takes multiple rounds of clinical trials, you know, for which there are hundreds, if not thousands of patients that require to be recruited. Um, so, you know, inevitably we will need to go back to the market for additional financing, but, um, you know, we are trying to progress and de-risk uh, as much as we can. And so to that end, we have preclinical and clinical trials planned uh, for initiation uh, prior to the end of the year. And we're very confident based on the literature um, that, you know, the results of that will dem demonstrably de uh, show that there is uh, safe usage of DMT in humans. And then following that, there are a variety of additional efficacy trials within the nicotine, opiate, and alcoholism space that we're pursuing, for which, of course, we will need to go back to the market to, um, you know, uh, request additional financing. Uh, and of course, you can't do it alone. It looks like you're surrounding yourself with uh, some pretty smart people and a good team. Um, what is next uh, on the horizon for Entheon? 
Yeah, I, with a lot of really interesting developments, uh, super exciting for us. Um, for those that are um, in the know or have been paying attention, uh, we've recently announced a, uh, a an observational study with Heading Health, uh, just to sort of uh, exemplify some of our ambitions in terms of the biomarker discovery space. Um, we are engaging in a, a trial or a study with uh, Heading Health as they're an Austin-based uh, ketamine clinic. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at EEG or electroencephalogram, looking at the neurophysiology of an individual as they undergo a ketamine experience. And we're also going to be looking at uh, genetic, uh, genetic associated differential response uh, to see that if, um, if there are people that possess these specific ketamine uh, biomarkers or ketamine metabolism biomarkers, whether they have a stronger or a weaker subjective experience. Um, and the really interesting thing there is uh, the investigation of the brain activity uh, as an individual undergoes the, the ketamine state, uh, understanding that there's a lot still unknown about what constitutes a psychedelic experience. It sort of defied poets and philosophers and scientists for a very long time. And so uh, we are engaging in an observation of what happens at the brain level under that state with the ambition of creating a, a diagnostic tool you know, in ketamine, as well as a variety of other drug classes to better understand what are the expected biomarkers that a person experiences or that are present within that drug experience so that we can start, um, you know, establishing what the expectations are for a normal psychedelic experience um, so that we can give physicians uh, additional visibility as to where that person is in this often difficult to characterize state uh, so that we can establish what is safe, what is therapeutic, and uh, help provide some guide rails and additional visibility to make that situation or that experience even safer uh, for individuals that are undergoing those experiences. Well, Timothy, I just want to say thank you on behalf of the Canadian Securities Exchange for your continued listing and as well as as, as well your support uh we admire what you and your team are doing and in trying to help the world and make it a better place and a safer place and a healing place uh i've been your host barrington miller this has been an episode of updated uh clip and i was here with timothy co from mpr thank you and we'll see you at the next update <laughs>